I'm a pet YouTuber. And if you go even broader, I'm in the animal entertainment and education business. And this is my cat Shadow. He's a big part of our business here at Mystic Animals. Today we're going to be going over what you need in order to start this kind of business. Surprisingly not that much stuff, by the way. And we're also going to be going over multiple reasons why you should be doing this and why it's not that expensive if you don't choose to make it expensive. And it's a very good thing to do for the world and society that we live in and all that stuff. So I'll get into that later. But let's start with what you actually need in order to actually start, if that makes any sense. You definitely don't need an owl monitor. That's like a fluff on top. Chip is a bearded dragon. You should stick to that. Fadi is a mountain horn dragon from Fadi. You could get one of those and you should. They're pretty great. But realistically, you should probably have one pet if you're gonna talk about pets or maybe have experience with pets or animals in general. It would be kind of strange to have somebody that's not very experienced make a pet channel and then maybe they go to different people's collections and stuff and like react to their stuff. I might have just given somebody a million subscriber idea. But the way I see it, there's a bunch of different paths that you could take, right? You could get a bunch of the same animals, different morphs or something like that, right? Like a whole bunch of different kinds of Euromastics, for example, like the Egyptians and the Nigerians, uh, the red and the yellows and the ornates and all the beautiful different variations of them. And you could become the Euro guy. Now that obviously works with every species, but you could also join a niche like arachnids or amphibians or ball pythons, although in that last one the game is more like morphs, which we'll get more into morphs in maybe an upcoming video. Hint, hint. Or you could do basically like we did and get a bunch of everything and then you could get a bunch of different perspectives on a bunch of animals or you could just basically do that with one animal right and make like an instagram that's dedicated to that one animal so many instagram channels that are dedicated to one animal that go so viral these these channels basically make bank off of the sponsors and all of the things that they get sent and all that stuff they do product placement they get paid all of that is good business as well with just one pet you know when i was young i really wanted to work in the field and work with animals and you know like do documentaries or things like that you know rub his tummy there because he's a good boy all that stuff would make me wish that i could go out in the wild and handle some reptiles and see the world you know they don't just send anyone to the Amazon rainforest to collect data samples on boa constrictors. Unfortunately, that would be a pretty cool job. No. But look at this. Look at all of these people. These people didn't go to school for reptiles. These people just have an undying love for these animals and wanted to share it on the internet. And it became their job. And that could be you too. It's just a matter of luck. But not just luck. There's a couple tools that you can get that will help you get there. And I'll help you choose those tools. For starters, all of our videos are recorded on phones. Gone are the days where you need a beautiful, huge $10,000 camera to produce something, right? Although that has its applications. A lot of people upgrade their cameras later on, but that's besides the point. Another important tool that I really love in order to improve the quality of all of the footage that you're shooting is a gimbal. I'm shooting with this gimbal, and this gimbal has only cost me this much. If you're going to be filming in a noisy area, or like if you're in a house with other people in it and they're stomping, or they're listening to music in the other room or something, you might want to invest in something to help improve your audio a little bit. You don't need a crazy microphone that's super expensive. We got these on Amazon and we freaking love them. They weren't that expensive. The link is in the description if you guys wanna go get them. I'm not affiliated, but they work really good. If you wanna see them in action, go check out the Expo video. We use them the entire time, right? So you can get an idea of the footage and that's in an Expo, right? So like there's 5,000 people in the building. But the gimbal and the microphone are not as important as an animal and at least a phone to film. And if you're gonna tell me that your enclosures aren't as pretty as these ones and you don't wanna show them on the internet and get bashed or something, then take your animal out, put it on your shoulder, right? And film in front of a wall, right? 
That's how a bunch of people start, and that's okay, and even though it looks a bit bland, do some jump cuts, and that will make the video interactive to watch. Understood? That's lesson number uno in editing. The rest will come maybe later. I'm an editor, right? So maybe I can do a whole video about editing, but that's basically an entire skill set, and you might not have that right out of the box, so it doesn't really count in how to start, right? But in order to start, you would kind of need to put that footage in some kind of editor in order to make it a video. And a couple of years ago, I would have said, unfortunately, you need a computer. But there's a couple of YouTubers that I've heard of that make full on videos on their phone. I think that's absolutely crazy, but I, I'm just used to a bigger screen and I don't want to like cram my entire editing software in a phone that's this big, right? But that's okay, right? If you want to do that and if you're used to that, then you should definitely do that. If you've posted TikToks or Vines or whatever, right? Do you remember Vine? Vine. If you've ever done any kind of like content where you've like, you've sent a Snapchat to somebody, right? Like at least you know how to time or frame something, right? You should be able to apply that to filming your animal in a cute way or whatever, right? Put it on the floor, do the broom, especially if you're gonna be putting an animal on the floor. But if you're gonna be holding it in your hand, you can just film in front of a blank wall, which admittedly this is a blank wall, but you know, I'm surrounded by enclosures, but I don't have to be, right? Like look, boom, there's no enclosures next to me and the video still looks good, right? I just need, this is a fire skink. Uh, it was $30 or something, $25 at an expo, right? And you could just do an a a animal video just like this, right? You could film yourself feeding it or holding it or taming it or doing little tricks with it or you could tame it to do some little cool stunts or whatever, right? I don't, I don't know what you want to do, right? Or you could build a little parkour area or something for it made of toilet paper tubes or clear tubing or whatever and you could film that and you could make so much content with some animals and that can be a very beneficial thing. And that's the next point that I want to get into, which is why bother? Why would you do this? What kind of psycho upholds his entire life to film a bunch of lizards and snakes and turtles going about their daily life? Well, first of all, this guy, and maybe you, especially if you clicked on this video. Am I right? If I'm right, tell me in the comments, right? And tell me, how old were you when you first got interested in working with animals? But let me get back to my point. Why would you want to do this? Because it is a fantastic use of your time on this planet. You can educate people about these beautiful animals that are often seen as like a nuisance or as something that you would want to like do and kick away or whatever, right? I know a lot of people are gonna be offended by that, but I've actually heard people that are like, ooh, if I said that in my backyard, I would kick it. And they weren't talking about this skink particularly, they were talking about a Berber skink, but same thing, right, obviously. Well, not same thing, but same family. You know what I'm saying. And if you choose to make your content family friendly, then that's even better because then you can educate the next generation into it. Of course, you don't have to. There's plenty of channels like Lindsay Nicole that don't censor themselves. And good on her, right? I, I would never swear on camera anymore, right? I actually have some music videos and some songs out on all platforms where I do swear and it's not family friendly, but this channel I wanted to be family friendly because I loved these animals as a kid, but I still don't want to give a bad example out there on the internet, right? And I want to be a source of light and inspiration to this hobby and to people that want to learn more about these beautiful animals, right? And I think that that's one of the main reasons that you should do this. There's also the aspect that if you've been in this industry as a customer or as just a keeper for a long time, you could insert your knowledge into the conversation, right? And we decided to pair our channel with an in-person, physical, zoo to you experiences, right? And I'm not gonna put the ad, I know if you guys know this channel, you knew I was gonna put the ad. I'm not gonna do the ad because I'm talking about it, but uh, we do some uh, reptile presentations for children and for people of all ages, actually, in schools and at people's houses and all that stuff with our animals, and we educate them on the beauty of the world of reptiles. But not just reptiles, we actually bring arachnids and all that other cool stuff 
to the parky as well. We just like teaching people about wildlife, right? And it doesn't matter their age or whatever, the parents get as much into it as the kids do, and everybody asks their questions, and everybody holds and touches the animals, and all, all that. It's a beautiful party, and it's super fun. But if you've had the flame, just like me, to correct your friends when they say ignorant facts about reptiles, then you should probably join the conversation online, right? And it's a beautiful thing to do with your time, and it just, helps so much in the conservation aspect as well to have a bunch of voices go out and speak about these reptiles and get a bunch of people interested. If we can get people interested about animals then it'll be a lot easier to save them, right? I think I'm paraphrasing because I don't think it's quite right, but it doesn't matter, right? You know what I'm saying, right? And that is what concludes today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like. Also, hit the subscribe button because it really helps a lot. I've been thinking about doing some sort of member program as well. Maybe that's coming soon. Rewards, extra videos, but all of that is gonna come in the next little bit. That's not for now. Anyway, this is Blaze, I'm Matt, and we're out. Peace. Thank you so much for checking out this video, everybody. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button, and if you really loved it, why don't you subscribe? It's free, you know?